as we remember you. Nothing can keep us apart as we remember your gospel. And nothing can keep us apart as we share that gospel with others. We are grateful to be gathered here today, together, in a strange sort of way, but together, nonetheless, to worship you, to strengthen this congregation, and to remind ourselves of family and friends as we gather. And so be with us. Thank you for this beautiful day. and Help us to worship you. Lord, in your mercy, amen. Invite Nancy forward to read. Good morning. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 19. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice, and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is June 14th, which means it is also Flag Day. You notice we displayed the flag uh, here today. And so our second hymn will be one I'm, I'm sure you recognize, O oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
Today's gospel is from the ninth and 10th chapter of Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. See, I'm sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the gospel 
of the Lord. It is good to see all of you here, although I have to admit, you're probably not really here to see me. You're almost certainly here to see Mark, who's been quite popular, apparently, in our videos. So he has his own chair. If you have been to Yosemite National Park, I haven't, but if you have, you no doubt have seen El Capitan, a 3,000 foot block of granite, which is a favorite of climbers from around the world. Now, most people go to El Capitan and snap a picture, whether it's sunrise or sunset or something in between. Most people do that. Some, not many, climb El Capitan with ropes and safety equipment. One, or at least the first, Mr. Hammond, climbed El Capitan 3,000 feet of granite straight up without any ropes, without any safety equipment. He free climbed it the whole way in four hours. Not me. I have a desperate fear of heights. I'm happy to take a picture solidly on the ground where it's safe. But others like to take risks. Others like to test themselves in that particular way. Others test themselves in other ways. Once you get to the top of El Capitan, that's not even the end of it. By the time you reach the top, you're at 7,500 feet above sea level. So not only have you climbed for at least four hours, if not more, the air is thin and you're gasping for every breath. That's about what, if not more, Jesus challenged the disciples to do in today's gospel. He said, look, I want you to go out into the towns and, and talk about the gospel. I want you to go to places where, you know, maybe they won't accept you, maybe they will, but I want you to go out and do it. Challenge yourselves. Go into every corner that you can find and share my word, share my love, share my forgiveness, my healing, all the things that I've just taught you. And so they thought, all right, that's a challenge. And then he said, oh, by the way, don't take any money with you and don't accept any money from anybody. Just take what you have, the clothes on your back, just go. At that point, they might have rather have climbed El Capitan. But they went anyways. And they took the risks necessary to create a movement that turned into a religion that's been with us for 2,000 years. That takes guts. That's a risk. They were probably terrified some of them. But they did it anyways, because they believed in the mission. They believed that they could do it, even if they thought, for a while at least, that they couldn't. And they got it done. And we have that same call today. We are reminded of Flag Day. We are reminded that long ago, long ago, the people who founded this country probably got together those first few times and thought, is this even possible? How do we go up against the largest military, naval and on land, in the whole world? How do we do this? How can we possibly climb this mountain? And they tried. And they created a movement. And eventually, they created a country. If you go to Betsy Ross's house in Philadelphia, have been there, it's tiny. It's tiny by today's standards. It's a one-room one room apartment by today's standards. In 
yet the first flags were, were sewn there in a room, honestly, not too much larger than two cars set together. And you probably thought, why does this guy Washington want me to sew this cloth together? But she did it. And it was a risk. And it was a challenge. But she did it. And our country's in the midst of its greatest challenge in the last hundred years, at least from a health standpoint. But we can do it. Because some of you here are even old enough to remember rationing during World War II. When we didn't know if we could win. But we did it. And that was four years. Some of you are old enough to remember the fears of the nuclear arms race or the unrest of the 1960s and you watch the unrest of today and you think, can we do it? And you say, yes, we can. We'll survive. We'll be all right. This is probably the first drive-in service in the history of this building, in the history of this congregation. And we're doing it because we're resourceful. We're doing it because we believe in the gospel. We're doing it because we believe in each other. And there will be challenges ahead. Some of them will not be too difficult, like standing at the base of a large mountain. Some of them will be more challenging, like climbing that mountain. And some of them, and maybe even the most important ones, will be as scary and challenging as climbing a granite wall without help at all. But we're going to face it. Because we have each other, and because, more importantly, we have Jesus with us, Whatever comes our way through the rest of 2020 and beyond, we know that even if we have to worship in a parking lot, we will worship. Even if we have to gather in a parking lot, we will gather. Even if we have to pray and sing wherever we are, at home, in our living rooms, and I hear from some of you, even in your pajamas, we will worship. Because Jesus reminded us that his greatest challenge on the cross was followed by redemption, resurrection, and hope. And so hopefully we won't have to do it this way for the rest of the year. But even if we do, we will keep climbing that mountaintop. We will keep climbing together. We will keep moving in the name of Jesus Christ at this building, in this neighborhood, in this town, and beyond. Mallory, when asked why he climbed Mount Everest, is said to have responded, because it's there. Well, our motivation is a little stronger. Jesus has called us out into the field too. Jesus has called us out into the parking lot, into the neighborhood, and into the world. And we can do it because we have the resources. We have what we need. And that's all of you and hope and a promise of the covenant and grace from the cross. That's all we need. We'll get there together. Amen. Invite Russ forward for the prayers. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. 
Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, today is Flag Day. Many years ago, the Second Continental Congress chose the colors of our flag to be red, white, and blue. White signifies purity and innocence. Red, hardiness and valor. Blue, vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to live in the manner of the red, white, and blue. Let us always seek to honor those values and to live up to them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially Clyde Sheck. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those to be Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll have our final hymn, and I hope it will inspire you to tell the story that you've heard today and that you've heard your whole lives.
as we wrap up today, 31 minutes, pretty good. Some really good news. The count today was 158 humans and three dogs. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty much what we would have on a normal summer Sunday. So good for you. Thank you for coming out. A couple of things. First, on your way out, please notice the beds here in the parking lot. Lots of folks have adopted these areas right here along the, uh, along the church building in the front. Uh, led by Dave and Diane Barons. We're really, really thankful for a lot of the work that people have done. Second, whoops. There'll be opportunities if you wish to leave your yellow card or an offering um, on the way out when you're dismissed. Al Struess is going to tell you how we're going to get out uh, in just a moment. So be patient. We want it to be uh, nice and, and orderly and safe. Also, this doesn't happen by accident. I am grateful for a wonderful staff, for a worship and music committee, for the ushers, all of the people who made this happen. I think I can say right now, given the level of participation by everybody, that we will do this again, June 28th, two weeks from today, all right? And finally, if you have... If you have thoughts, ideas, concerns, anything about this service, please email them to me or call the office, write a note, whatever you wish. We want to give two weeks in between them so we can fix anything that needs to be fixed and, and take care of any, of any issues. So honestly, your feedback, since this is the first time, is really, really welcomed. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And in the first, for the first time live, I want to say to you, grow in God, care in Christ, serve in the Spirit. Amen. Thanks, everybody.